Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Mr. Saucedo's YouTube videos. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to use a go motion detector, which measures the position, velocity, and acceleration of a moving object. So it's kind of a cool piece of equipment for us to use. Um, the first thing that you'll notice here is that I have the entire direction page, and I don't expect you to read all of this, okay? I'm just going to be giving you a little bit of information about how it works and what you're going to be plugging into where. So in your Chromebook, um, what you're going to want to plug in is the USB cable, and then to that you're going to connect the Go Motion detector. Okay, so the Go Motion detector has a little port on the side here, which you can plug in, and then make sure you're plugging in the USB cable part into the um, Chromebook. Okay, don't don't mix those up because it won't work otherwise. And when you plug it in, it should all of a sudden have like a little light somewhere that lights up telling you that like you've plugged it in. And it's probably going to be red so that um, you know that at least it's um, plugged in but not working currently. And it'll change color when it's actually working like it's supposed to. But for now, a red light is totally fine. Okay, so how does this work and how are you going to set it up? Um, it really depends on what you're measuring and how fast things are moving and where things are moving. But the way it works is it kind of emits a short burst of sound waves, okay? And so uh, what you'll see is um, this is both an emitter and a detector. And so um, it's going to emit a pulse of sound, kind of like a bat, okay? And um, it's going to bounce off of any object that's moving or stationary in the room within its uh, cone of detection. So what the heck is that? Um, this is kind of a little weird sample of what that looks like. And so um, it emits a cone of sound. And anything in that cone of sound that's moving or still um, will um, reflect that sound back to the speaker where it's detected. So anything in its range that is moving um, will get picked up and graphed. So you want to make sure that you set it up in a way that nothing else is moving behind the moving object that you're trying to measure. Okay, so you want to be sure that everything is kind of out of the way and everything's nice and clear. Now, the cool thing about the Go Motion detector is that this pivots, so you can actually open and close it. And so you can set it flat on a table like this, or you can stand it upright. I mean, there are a lot of ways of kind of getting your detection um, to work. Okay, so just keep that in mind. So you can always open this if you get some weird data, you can clear it out and then try it again. Another thing that you'll notice when you open this up is that right over here are some, um, is a little slider that has some pictures on it. So um, inside it looks like there's like a little skateboardy looking thing. Okay, and then there's a person and a ball. And so what this is trying to tell you is that there are technically two settings. And so you might want to play around with that if you get some weird data, like just try clicking on the opposite one and moving your slider over and see if like your data is better or worse than before. But um, this is for things that are moving at constant velocities. And then this is for falling objects and for very big things like people that might be moving that you're trying to measure the velocity or position or acceleration of, okay? But um, anyway, so that just gives you an introduction to how the Go Motion Detector works. But what you're going to want to do if you haven't done it already is go to the uh, Google Chrome Web Store and uh, type in graphical analysis. And when you do that, um, it'll come up as this, Vernier Graphical Analysis. And when you've done that, um, if you've already installed the software, it'll just kind of say like launch when you click on it. If it doesn't, though, it'll say add to Chrome, and you can just add this to Chrome so that you can actually use it, okay? Um, and the nice thing is I've already added this to Chrome, so I'm going to click Launch App. And when I do that, um, it's going to open the actual program which we'll be using, and it should change the color of our detector. And that weird pulsating noise that you're hearing in the background is the sensor working, okay? And so right now it's sending an ultrasonic pulse and it's bouncing off of anything that's moving in the room and anything that's stationary within its cone of detection. And so what you're going to want to do is click on sensor data collection. I know that's going to get kind of annoying, but it's okay. This I'll make this as brief as possible. And then what you'll see here is it'll give you position and velocity. Um, you can click on view though, and you can even get acceleration as well. So you can click on one graph just to get position or two graphs to get velocity and position, or three to get position, velocity, and acceleration. So we can measure all three of those at the same time. Now for anything, you want to make sure that you name it. So instead of experiment four, I'm going to call this um, moving object test, since that what, that's what it's going to be. 
And at the bottom here, it's going to say um, time-based, 20 samples a second. So every second, it's going to give you 20 points of data. So it's giving you very accurate kind of data. And then um, right here, it's only going to measure it for five seconds. But um, you should probably click manually so that you actually can measure it indefinitely as long as you'd like. You can also change the time unit to milliseconds or to hours or minutes. But for us, I mean, like this is going to be pretty much perfect. But manually is probably the best thing we can do. Okay. And the other thing that you'll want to kind of like deal with here is that um, other than that, other than one, two, and three graphs, if you click on table, it'll give you a graph, a graph, a data set for time based on position, velocity, and acceleration. It gives you a lot of good data you can collect. And then if you click on meter, it's giving you um, what it's detecting right now. So I'll put my hand directly against the sensor. And so it picks up that it is very close to the sensor. And when I remove it, it's now detecting approximately two meters away. It's bouncing off of the wall in my room. Okay. And by the way, all of that is in real time down here at the bottom as well. And then you can also do graph and table. So it's giving you both at the same time, but we're going to be dealing with the three graphs because that's probably the thing that's going to be the best. And so all you have to do is just click on collect data and it's going to go a little crazy. Okay. But whenever you're done collecting it, you can just click on stop. And so I'm going to be moving my hand in front of the speaker just so that it can get, you can get an idea of what this will look like when you're actually doing it. So I'm going to click collect. And I'm moving my hand close, and I'm moving my hand away, moving my hand closer, moving my hand away, moving my hand closer, moving my hand away, back and forth, and stop. Okay? And so it's giving me in real time the position that my hand was from the speaker, um, and then also the change in the velocity. Okay? So again, um, it's giving me a lot of good data here, and also the change in acceleration. And um, because um, I can edit any of these graphs at any time. I'm going to tell you how you can use these graph options. So graph option, you can give it a title. So I can say position of hand. You can make these points instead of lines. Okay, you can do both. You can dynamically change the range. So if you wanted that above to like 10, you can, you know, change that. If you wanted it lower to like five, you can do that. Okay, so you can change the horizontal range. You can change the vertical range. So you can change it so that, you know, you get a different range on the top. And you can do the exact same thing with velocity, um, give it a title, change its range. You can do the exact same thing with acceleration. And then at any point, you can click export and download image, and it will give you an image of all of the data that you collected. So it really does give you a good, and I'm sorry, it's getting really annoying. I'm going to unplug the sensor. There we go. Um, and I'm glad it didn't just all of a sudden break the entire thing by me doing that. But um, you should probably never just unplug the sensor in the middle of a test. Anyway, um, position, okay, I'll change this to velocity of velocity of hand. Okay, let's change that to also points. Okay, and then I'll change this to acceleration, which I spelled wrong. Uh, apparently, I can't spell acceleration, but that's fine. Acceleration of hand, and so... Um, when you click export and download image, it'll give you access to all of this data, which is fantastic. Okay. And that's basically it. So that's how you use the go motion sensor. And um, if you have any particular questions, just make sure you ask, but I hope that you found that very helpful.